Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about how the context manager decorator works under the scenes. Uh, this one's going to be pretty advanced, so it's going to be a lot of, I have to write a lot of code for this one, so I don't know, hopefully you don't get too lost. But anyway, let's jump into it. Um, just to give a recap, this is the context manager decorator usage that we had in the previous video. And if we look at the first video, uh, I will link both of those two videos in the, in the description. This is where we wrote the low level, you know, double under enter, double under exit version of the context manager. We'll actually be coming back to this a little bit in our own uh, context manager decorator implementation. Um, but we're gonna hide this for now. We're gonna actually open up t3.py and write a new version of this. So let's copy the code that we currently have and we'll be reusing that later. And I'm gonna write my own version of this context lib, the context manager decorator. I'm gonna be taking some shortcuts here. Uh, the actual implementation is a little bit more complicated than what I'm gonna be doing. Um, I'll talk about some of those shortcuts later. Um, but yeah, like for instance, mine is not gonna forward along the doc string stuff. It's not gonna be a good decorator. So I'll, I'll, I'll link how to be a better decorator in the description. So hopefully hopefully you guys can do that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that out for this and just focus on the actual interesting parts of this. Um, and so what actually happens behind the scenes, this uh, context manager decorator, is it's using a generator as a coroutine. And a couple of people have asked, have asked for a video about that, but I haven't done it yet. It's on my list of things to do, but it will come eventually. Um, but we're actually going to use this generator as a coroutine in the same way that the low level one does. Um, but we're gonna implement that, you know, using using a special class. Uh, but let's start implementing this def my context manager. This is going to take in a function and I'm also going to skip the type annotations on this because they're pretty complicated. Uh, but it's basically going to take a function that takes in some parameter set and returns a new function, uh, which takes that same parameter set, but, um, you know, changes the yield type to be the context manager type. Um, so you can, I guess we could write out the type annotations. Run typing import generator. And so we have t ret equals type var t ret. And this typing is not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be close to what the actual thing is, I think. Type var, and we also need from typing import callable. And we're gonna have this take in a callable. I'm gonna leave out the arguments because it's not that important. Uh, that returns a generator t ret none none. This is going to be our function type. And this is going to return a new callable. Uh, if I can grab this correctly, a new callable. So that is going to be a callable taking some arguments. And you would probably use parameter specs to do these. Um, I don't know much about those. They're brand new, so I don't know that yet. And this is going to return a new callable that's going to take, going to return a context manager manager that takes, I don't actually remember the type uh, things here, but I think it's this. I think there's only one thing there. I could be wrong there. From typing import context manager. Actually, let me look it up really quickly because we have the Python 3 docs. Python 3 typing. And if we look for context manager, it just has one uh, one type here. And that is the that should be the, the yield type there. OK, cool. So that is our context manager. We're going to have an inner type or an inner function in here. And that's going to be what this callable is here. Uh, my context manager callable. And it's going to take star args, star star quarks. And it's going to return a context manager of t ret and I have messed up brackets somewhere. There we go. And we're going to implement our context manager as class. So this is kind of the low level, uh, my context manager manager. And that class is going to have in it self. And we need to take in that generator here. <laughs> this is going to be the generator t ret none none and of course this would have to be generic t ret from typing import generic and in it returns none self.gen equals gen 
We're going to have double under enter, which we'll implement in a second, which is going to return tret. And we'll have double under exit. This is tp optional type base exception. Actually, we can just copy this from the original one here, t.py. We can copy this because I don't want to type that out again. Uh, but we need to import all the things for it. From typing import type, from type import optional, from types import traceback type. Okay, so that's our context manager class. This context manager callable is going to return our context manager class, my context manager. It's also going to take this function here that we had above. It's going to call that with these arguments and uh, pass that into our context manager. This is going to initialize the generator. Uh, when a function has a yield in it, so if we look at t2.py, uh, the first call to this function doesn't actually execute any of this code. It only gets executed when you start iterating through it. So we're gonna do func star r star star quars. I'm gonna try take a drink of water. And to finish off our decorator, we're going to return my context manager callable. Okay, <laughs> so that uh, that gets us to like kind of the first stopping point where we're looking at you know kind of the general structure of how we're going to build this. We have our decorator here. This decorator is going to receive this function as func here, and we're going to change that function into a new function which wraps this. And uh, the way it wraps this is it calls that function, but passes along all the arguments. And our my context manager class is going to kind of manage that generator through the context manager protocol. Um, but anyway, let's jump into the the rest of this implementation here, which shouldn't be too tricky. In enter, we're going to start our coroutine. So it hasn't been started when we receive that generator. We're going to start it by calling next on it. Uh, next is how you you know step through to the next yield here, um, and as part of the part of the initialization, part of the double under enter, we should run the first chunk of code in this generator here, and we're going to do that by calling next on self .gen. and next can raise an exception. We don't want it to raise an exception here, um, but if this generator is implemented incorrectly, we need to make sure we catch that exception and raise a more useful error message. So we can do try. Um, We'll also receive the yield value from this next call here, so we can return that. So here's here's us passing the um, you know the type we get from our generator out as our return value from double under enter, and we need to make sure that we accept uh, what is it stop iteration? Yeah, stop iteration. This is the exception that we'll get if the generator did not have a yield in it. So we're gonna raise our own special error there. Raise runtime error generator did not yield. So this means that the programmer made a mistake there. Um, but that's that's the implementation of enter. Enter is pretty easy. Where it gets a little bit more complicated is when we have to implement exit. And exit has kind of two different cases here. One is the, um, the type is none. So let's handle that type is none case first. That's kind of the easy case. If tp is none, this means that no exception was passed into here. This was kind of the normal case where the block exit norm exits normally. Uh, we again have to call next on this generator coroutine. This will run the last half of the code here. So we're gonna do try next self.gen. This will run the rest of the code there. And again, we have to check for stop iteration. But in this case, we should expect a stop iteration. Uh, we should get to the end of the generator, and the generator should say, I'm done, you're good, uh, except stop iteration. And if we got a stop iteration here, that means that everything was handled properly, and we don't need to, you know, as part of the context manager protocol, we say, you know, nothing happened here, so we'll return none. We didn't suppress an exception. Uh, but... Uh, if we didn't get stop iteration, that means the generator didn't stop and it wasn't a one generator. It was either like a two or more generator. Uh, and in that case, we need to, you know, raise a more useful error. So we'll do raise runtime error uh, generator did not stop. Because it, you know, it should have stopped in this case. Um, and that's, that's pretty straightforward. This is kind of the handling of the non-exceptional case. Uh, 
Uh, but lastly, we want to handle the exceptional case, and that's actually, I think, where context managers are the most magical. And this is where we're going to evolve kind of the, the coroutine part of generators. Now, generators, uh, we showed using double or the, the next functionality to kind of precede that coroutine. Uh, you can actually trigger an exception to handle or to come out of this yield by using the throw method of a generator. And that's how, that's kind of what makes this tick. And so if TP was none here, we're going to make sure to call the throw method of a generator. And the throw method actually has basically the same signature as double under exit here. So we can do uh, self.gen.throw and we can pass in along, pass along TP inst and TB. Um, and depending on how this throw happens, so it, it will resume at, uh, execution at this yield and you know run any normal accept clauses you have here. Uh, but again, we need to do some exception handling of ourselves to make sure that this throw was implemented correctly. And the first case is the stop iteration case. Stop iteration. And if we got stop iteration, this means one of two things. Uh, that means one of two things. Uh, there's one possibility that we're passing in the instance here that is the stop iteration we got back. So basically, we we sent a stop iteration and it didn't handle it. It re-raised something else. Um, and in that case, we need to say that the exception is not handled. So if inst is e, so is here is exactly identical. So they refer to exactly the same object. So if inst is e, this means that we didn't handle the exception. So we need to say that it is not suppressed. So we need to say return false. So false is we didn't suppress the exception. Uh, but if it's some other stop iteration, so maybe, you know, maybe somehow this exception or this, uh, you know, generator here re-raised a different stop iteration. It's probably not going to happen, but it, it might happen. Uh, but in, this, in that case, we would return true. So this means that we, you know, we, we exited our generator normally. Uh... So this this is kind of the normal case where where we reached the end of this function. We didn't re-raise whatever exception we passed in here, uh, but this generator exited. So we say that we did handle this exception, and we'll see that when we try and run this this foo error here. Um, there's some other subtlety in the standard library about this block of code here. Uh, I'm not going to go into details here. You can check the actual implementation if you want to see that. Um, but this is kind of a, a simplified version of this. Uh, and lastly, we need to handle any other exception that we retrieve back. So if we do accept base exception as E. And again, we want to do the same check that we did before. We want to check that the exception we passed in here is not the same exception that we got back. So if we say if inst is E, uh, we didn't handle this, so we're going to return false. But in this case, we're actually going to re-raise any exception that we got out here. So this would be the case where, you know, somehow in this after block here, it raised some other exception. Um, we'll actually trigger that from here now that, I, now that I look at this. And that's, I think, the implementation. I think I got this right. Um, I'll leave this up on screen and we're actually going to... Oh, we can't fit the whole thing on screen. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to run through both of these scenarios down here. So I'm going to actually save this file and re reopen it over here. And we'll show this one first. This is kind of the normal case. And so this should print, you know, before, then it should print inside, then it should print these two values, then it should print after. Uh, so if we run t3.py, tuples not defined, all right. More types. <laughs> Import tuple. Let's actually run the linters on this first. And if I name tuple, all right. Didn't actually save there. There's a bug in my text editor that I need to fix, and we got a blank line at the end of the file. We can just get rid of that. There's a bug in that as well. Uh, I haven't been able to work on my text editor in a while, so there's a there's a few little bugs there. Uh, okay, but now we should be able to run this. This is the normal scenario. So you can see down here. We initialize our context manager. We run the before that prints uh, before. Oh, I ran the wrong file. T3.py. 
So we ran the before, then we ran inside, then we ran this, and then we ran after. So you can see we've we've properly done it in the non-exceptional case. I'm a little bit more concerned about the exceptional case. I'm not sure that I got that exactly right, but let's try this one. Uh, oops, I highlighted too many lines. Cut. Okay, so in this case, we should handle this exception, so we shouldn't see an exception bubble out of this. Uh, cool. Yeah, it looks like it worked. Okay, so we printed before context, then we printed before, uh, then we were inside the block here, so we printed boom, and then we suppressed that exception, so we didn't allow it to re-raise out of there, and you can see we didn't get a stack trace here. Now, I'm concerned about this one. I'm not sure that this one works. Let's see, stop iteration. Uh, let's, let's raise stop iteration out of here and see if that's handled properly. It shouldn't catch this. It should allow this to just re-raise. Uh, generator raise stop iteration. Oh, right. So I think this case is actually impossible now that I think about it. Um, <laughs> because in Python 3.8 and above, uh, I think actually if we do this in 3.6, we'll see it. Um, Python 3.6. Oh my god, what is wrong with my keyboard? T3.py, there we go. Oh. <laughs> Right, but then we have the new, the new uh, f strings. So we gotta put these back to Python three point six. I'm gonna backport our code a little bit. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, so this allowed us to re-raise stop iteration out of here. I guess the code in the standard lib that I was looking at still has this there because it didn't break anything, uh, but it's kind of unnecessary in Python three seven and above. Um, and lastly, if we do runtime error here, hello, we should see that this uh, allows the runtime error to propagate out. Um, and in fact, yeah, we do. Cool. So I guess I guess I got it right on the first try. So that's that's pretty good. Um, but anyway, here's kind of how you would implement context manager at the low level. I don't know why you would ever do this. Just use the, the decorator that already exists. Um, the decorator that already exists also has some other features like working as a, you know, as a decorator decorator if you really wanted to. Um, but anyway, hopefully you found this useful. This is pretty complicated. This is definitely going to be an advanced video. Um, but yeah, if you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.